I don't have a copy of this letter. I'm still trying my best to get a hold of it. Um, but it exists somewhere in Manson's vast possessions that uh, it was a letter that essentially said that if Paula wasn't fired, that she would break up with him. So Evan, um, Evan wrote a letter to Manson saying that if you weren't fired, she was going to break up with, with him. She was going to leave. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Once I get that, gloves are off. <laughs> and also like, off from that, it's, you know, you look at the fact that she was obsessed with um, the novel Lolita. I mean, that's just something Vladimir. personal, you maybe a little bit. You know? you know what's kind of sad? That's my favourite book as well. Mm. <laughs> That's like, I've not touched that book since I found out that Evan liked it. I won't lie to you. I can't look at it without thinking about Evan. Oh, you, you, shouldn't yeah. let, you shouldn't have let that affect yeah, Don't Evan. let her ruin it for you, right? <laughs> I won't. I mean, I, I'll end up looking at it again at some point. But, uh. <laughs> but it's like, I'm in that kind of... I'm, I'm the age that Evan was when she entered the relationship with Marilyn Manson. She said, you know, multiple times that dating older guys worked for her. I'm sure it did mm -hmm. for more reasons than one. Um, yeah. I'm the exact same. I'll just admit it. I have a preference for older guys and I've been in situations. I where... do too. And I always, I've always dated guys 10 to 15 years older than me because yeah. see, the thing is, is if you are, if you kind of have any kind of brainiac nerdy in you, which you mm -hmm. obviously do. And I would say Miss Greta does too. So like, you can say it like, you know, Hey, you know, like, yeah, kind of like people on the smarter end of the spectrum kind of, I think with men and women, I mean, it's proven that we develop a little bit on a different scale age wise, mm -hmm. like women develop sooner than men do. And I think that they develop intellectually and emotionally earlier than men do. So, I mean, I, I never dated a guy and I never, never dated a high school guy ever in my life, not even when I was in junior high and high school, because I had nothing to in common with them. Like I was like, what are you going to do? Put me on the, the handlebars of your bike, you know, <laughs> like it just really was not something I was interested in. All my friends were like 10 years, 15 years older than me. Always, always, you know. See, yeah, this yeah, is why I get on. Sorry, Paula, are you saying something? Last time I dated anyone my age was before I was 18. So other than that, it's always been much, much older. You know, I know I've gotten old because I've started hanging out with people my age and, and, and younger <laughs> now. Now I'm, now I'm like the old person now, which is kind of crazy, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, I think the, I get on so well with, um, with Kristen and Celtic Iron as well. And, and, you know, I've spoken to Greta and Paula a few times on Instagram and, you know, I don't feel awkward speaking to people who are a bit older than me. Not yeah, saying you're old, by the way. You, <laughs> you can keep up with the conversation. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, I mean, I've just kind of gelled better. So, you know, I understand where Evan's coming from in that to, in that sense when she said mm -hmm. that dating older guys worked for her. Mm -hmm. But she kind of sets this stigma of it, like it's some kind of taboo. And, and by like, calling it's like this weird kind of pervy thing too. Yeah. You know? Like it's like, you know, it is it's like a fetishization of things, which mm -hmm. is like unnecessary, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think I remember um, in watching one of Greta's videos, like before I even started watching, uh, making videos. Um, and I think you said something like, it's like an infantilization of, wi of women. It's so disgusting. And I hate it. <laughs> it's so disgusting. Because it, it's always the man that gets portrayed as a predator even if yeah. it's the woman initiating the relationship. See, that, that was something I tried to make a point of when I spoke to Kristen last time was the fact that in my experience between Manson and I, but of the two of us, I'm the more assertive, 100% hands down. And, and I, I can, have been yeah. since I was 21, you know? You know, and like I can honestly, I honestly, obviously believe that. Um, but based off what I, you know, heard from, from you and other, other people, like, yeah, I can imagine that he's not exactly the most dominant person when it comes to interacting with women. You know, I kind of just picked, not up at all. Off, picked up on that. Yeah, and I think he's got that shy kind of self-conscious thing yeah. still going on. And because of that, it, that's what makes him like easy prey to like a woman who's unscrupulous, you know. But yeah. um, you know, having been around him too after shows, like on tour, um, you know, people line up to see him and they'll do whatever to spend time with him on the bus or in his hotel room. And when I would be there, a lot of the times, I would say maybe like 98% of the time, he would 
dismiss everyone and he and just hang out with me. And, you know, he he wasn't really interested in like having a wild night with, you know, some random fam. A lot of the time it just it never went down. I've, I've always said he's like one of the least rapey people that I know, honestly. And I know that sounds kind of terrible, but not really the truth. Um, he's just not that kind of guy. Like, I mean, I remember, okay, so I knew him from when I was younger, younger. I knew him uh, back in the day, like when I was hanging out at the Tate house and all this good stuff, right? And then he and I didn't see each other for a couple of years. And then like I was, you know, my life took this different turn and I went from being just a student to becoming a model and all this stuff. And I got cast on this video shoot with him. So after not seeing him for a couple of years, the first uh, encounter that we have together is like, you know, it's like five 30 in the morning and we're in the makeup trailer, you know, for this video. And I was like, it's kind of standard issue. I don't know if it is these days, but when I was working back in the day, back in the wild west nineties and whatnot, you know, like when you're working as a model, usually you just wore like your company uniform is just like a flesh colored thong. And then they can put whatever they want to put on you. You can't wear socks because they leave marks on your legs. So it's just like flesh colored yeah. thong and like a pair of sweats. That's what you wear to work. And then as soon as you get to work, to want to take off the sweats because you don't want like any bands or marks from clothes on you just in case depending on what you're wearing and you know clothes leave marks on you so like you just basically put on like you know uh, a blanket a towel whatever and just the thong and that's what you wear because you can't have like interfering marks on your body uh, it gets in the way of work so but then I was just funny there I am sitting there in this makeup chair wearing nothing but a thong and you know you just get really used to it and I mean I worked in Europe a lot too where they don't really trip on toplessness and I never did either just I always figured I have a small chest it's not a big deal nothing to write home about right so I was just saying makeup chair doo -doo -doo, wearing nothing but my thong and that's like when I like, looked over and I was like oh my god I can't believe it's you you know it was funny because like here we bumped into each other again, and I remember him being really kind of embarrassed like I could tell he was uncomfortable that I was like sitting next to him not fully dressed I could just tell he felt weird you know like <laughs> He felt awkward, you know, yeah, I, I was just acting like everything was normal. And he was just a little bit like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I have That's experience style, like, though, you know, like there was this one time we had a photo shoot at his house um, on Mother's Day and uh, I had invited a bunch of girls and they all decided like they wanted to like hop in the pool. And, you know, and some of them took their tops off, you know, whatever, not a big deal. Um, and then, I, OK, let me do it, too. <laughs> And then, I, but I was covering myself when I turned around, he got so upset with me and he, he's like, he went inside and then he had, uh, I forget who come and get me from the pool and I put on my shirt and then he's like, Paula, you can't be doing that. You're like my sister. And I was like, I'm so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like he's like, yeah, he's like a very decent guy like that. That's the thing is like, he's not that weird predatory type. He's the kind of guy that you can embarrass him like that, mm -hmm. like by being too forward or too whatever way, mm -hmm. like when a woman is like that around, he gets a little uncomfortable, obviously. You've seen it. I've seen it too. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, just going back to um, what I think the motives are, but I've spent a lot of time thinking about this as you know, from an outsider's perspective. Um, originally, I thought Evan's main goal was to build up a political career. Originally, that's what I thought. Right. Because it made it made perfect sense mm -hmm. <laughs> with, the, you know, the Phoenix Act and um, her sudden relationship with Ilma Gore, who's obviously a hardcore feminist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it kind of made sense you know, it kind of flowed really well, that kind of theory. But since this Jamie Bell stuff came out, um, it to me, it seems like Evan has multiple, you know, motives. It, mm -hmm. it honestly just seems like this Manson thing has fallen um, in, in a place where she can use it mm -hmm. to get, you know, different results from other places. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like she's yeah. using yeah. it in the custody it's a battle. It's like a multi-tool for her. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it's Marilyn Manson. So, of course, people are going to believe her because it's Marilyn Manson. Uh, right. And he's been the voice of this, like, lightning rod controversy. Exactly. And somebody that people have imagined is some creepy guy. Yeah. No, no. You know what's kind of funny about, you know, bringing up... It's totally irrelevant, but it's just popped into my head. My, I asked my grandma once um, mm. about Fifty Shades of Grey. Why I did that, I don't know. Okay. Um, and then she turned around to me and she went... Yeah, that's boring. That's tame. And I'm like, what? Go grandma. <laughs> she thought it was tame. That's awesome. Yeah. My grandma's cool. My grandma loves Manson. Sounds like it. My grandma loves everything about all of this. She's, you know, she's a 
great air, great air grandma. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah. Didn't she get you into some cool music? She likes cool music too. I think I remember seeing you say something about that. Maybe in one of your Yeah, videos. she likes Alice Cooper. That's rad. See, right there. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> she adores Alice Cooper. <laughs> one of my first, like, most life-changing experiences was, like, I, the first Alice Cooper concert I saw on HBO when I was, like, I don't know, seven or eight. It was when HBO first came out. I'm 46, you guys, so I'm super old. I'm, like, I'm ancient, man. But it's okay, because, like, the older you get, like, the more uh, cunning and wise you are, you know? It's, like, I would kill to have this brain in my little 21-year-old body. It would be amazing. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I still think I'm holding up okay. <laughs> you know but yeah yeah Alice Cooper changed my life that that concert because he like had a guillotine on stage and he beheaded this woman and he picked up the head and like French kissed it and there was blood everywhere and I was a little kid and I was like wow you know my grandma loves that that. my grandma likes to point that out a lot (laughs) just bring that super funny (laughs) yeah she's great um that's super funny Holly, you looked like you wanted to say something about when um Perla mentioned Evan (laughs) and the groupie video well, you know, I, I've seen Groupie, by the way. I'm one of the few people that I got to see it. You know, um, you know, I haven't seen it in its entirety, right? That's I've a shame. Seen it. Because Isn't he wears those shoes and that cowboy hat, you know. It's a great look. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, uh, I remember um, on tour, he had made a video uh, and like an intro for his website where, you know, he's he looks like he's punching Evan in the face and, you know, she's like doing the motions, like, you know. So that is, that is, that is Evan then? In yeah. That video. Yeah. Right. But I was like, okay, what it's is acting. this? And um, so, but I watched the entirety of it. And in there you can see that Evan was really into it. And like, she would stop and put like more blood on her nose or her mouth to make it look more, you know, disgusting. Um, so it's just like, you know, people like to bring that video up and point that out yeah. as like, an, that, you know, he, he had these proof that he's some abuser because he made a movie, you know, mm-hmm. Quentin Tarantino yeah. should be locked up then. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, like well, it's, it's the land of make believe. That's the whole point is it's cinema. It's all make believe. It's all role playing. It's all fictitious. That's when people are telling me, Oh my God, you drank somebody's pee. And I'm like, no, I didn't. It was like a movie. It was called like somebody peed in a glass and then handed me another glass. Because if I recall correctly, like when uh, when Manson tried to hand me the glass of supposed pee, I was like, after you. That's what I said to him. <laughs> and I like and I shoved the cup back at him and made him drink it first. So, you know, that like we weren't both like slurping on Pogo's urine together. You know, that wasn't <laughs> happening. Oh, God, that's funny. Um, I was going to uh, bring up the kind of way that Manson fans are being treated at the moment you know you get Evan Rachel Wood fans for instance um calling us out on harassing the victims when <laughs> they by, by existing or what you know like uh, you know? apparently um you get you know you get called rape apologists you get called mm-hmm. abusers I got called um I think someone actually called me a straight up rapist mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. supporting Manson so that was the first I'd ever heard that I'm a rapist. Uh, um, well, didn't 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 Evan Rachel Wood just recently when she was she released something saying that Manson's supporters uh, they were facilitating pedophilia that they were they were a gang of um, Satan Satan worshiping pedophile kidnappers or her something. Her exact her exact words were um, they're also Satanist pedophile Nazis. All oh, right. Okay. I was like, wow, okay, that's the first I'm hearing about it. Yeah, so, that's a lot. That's a lot of commi- commitment to a lot of causes right there, right? Also, the idea of dragging Satanism into, into that. Yeah, but that just is a reflection of the person saying it's ignorance, honestly. That's exactly. like, hello, this yeah. isn't the Satanic Panic. It's not 1990 anymore. So uh, oh. it's that's a pretty uninspired insult, I guess. But but she has an audience in mind when she makes that statement. Of course. She the knows kind of that, that will eat it up. the mainstream, when they hear the word Satanist, they know exactly what image that's uh-huh. going to evoke. And that's what she's playing with. Of course, of course. Yeah. She She's very, very aware of the audience that she has. Oh, kind of strange, she, too, that she kind of is working both the weird wholesome angle and the weird um, alt lifestyle angle. I think it's kind of strange that she's managed a way to kind of juggle both of them. Like where because, you know, she tries to kind of I mean, it's like it's like Esme coming out dressed like a nun and stuff when it's like she has like a considerable background in like the BDSM scene and as like mm-hmm. a, you know, professional 
dom sub and a fetish model it's like you know she's seen a little bit of everything that's just part of the lifestyle you know yeah like i, said, I mean san francisco i can vouch for it you see a little <laughs> bit of everything you know what i mean and and so and there's nothing well, wrong with that there's zero judgment on that doesn't make you about exactly, person. it's not exactly. slut shaming or anything like that but it's like but you can't just all of a sudden act like like oh like oh my god i've never seen people naked before and like yeah, i'm so exactly hopeful. i mean when i made my um video on esme bianca mm. i said in it you know you can you can absolutely do what the hell you want okay you know women should just just every, anyone i don't care if you're a man or Natural. woman just don't be a hypocrite. anything just do what the hell you want right and you know and i said in my video there's a massive respect that i do have for esme bianco when she was doing that stuff you know mm -hmm. back in the day whatever there's a there's a level of respect i have for every woman who is ballsy enough to do stuff like that despite sure, sure. the stigma around it sure. um, however you don't get that respect when you turn it around and decide that it wasn't your responsibility to do that stuff you no, can't just no. turn around and blame it on the man it's not fair and it sets feminism completely backwards you yeah. know yes. whatever feminism is nowadays no, right. I if you, if you want to wear the, the title of, of empowered woman, you can't be a victim at the same time because the exactly. two don't go hand in hand. And and exactly. and you know, I have a lot of respect for anybody that owns their stuff. Like whatever mm -hmm. it is you do, like stand behind it and be proud of it. And I will respect you because you have like personal integrity and authenticity at that point. If you, especially if it's something that other people are going to give you a hard time about, like you know, yeah. being into or whatever, then go ahead. If you can stand behind it and you're like, hey, I, but I'm a good person and then I don't have any questions for myself, so it doesn't matter what other people think of me. Then exactly. good for you. It just honestly, it doesn't like personally, I do not care what, what you're into, what your religion is, no. where you come from, how old no. you are, any of that bullshit. I don't care. As long as you're not an asshole and you're not a dick to me. Right. Just be a decent, genuine human being and, and we're yeah, good. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm just I just don't like any of this stigma, all this victimization of so many different types of people. And it's you know, especially with the Me Too stuff, I think it's extremely toxic now. And I think Ev extremely like, toxic. Evan, Evan knows exactly how to utilize that. And Esme does. I think that she does. Um, Ashley Smithline, I don't know if she knows what she's doing. I don't know if I mean, she that's knows why what, she what said what she was a kid at 26. Oh, yeah, they, exactly. all, they, they all know what they're doing in the sense yeah. that society as a whole has a lot of sympathy for a young woman in distress you know there are psychological experiments showing that people are yep. first to stop to help a young a girl and people want to believe and want to so those are the emotions they're playing with and that's mm -hmm. why they, they 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 portray themselves as so innocent and that's why as maybe uncle is dressed as a nun pretending she knows nothing about I think that to weaponize that instinct in people is really yeah. pretty obscene and perverse honestly especially mm -hmm. it's like and it also takes away from the genuine experiences of people that that are victims and yeah. that have been abused and are survivors like you know actually i don't even like the word applying the word victim to somebody who's been raped or sexually abused you're not a victim because that's not a, that's a mentality that's not a title you have to have you can be a survivor but i don't yeah. think you have to be a victim because that just i don't know i really don't like that word i really don't like people i don't like the thought of being pitied by people and i wouldn't want to be a victim it's like it's not considered positive last time i checked exactly. you know? i mean i got um you know when i was talking about getting all this hit online um, someone actually went back and screenshotted the post where I described, well, not described, where I talked about my own sexual assault. And by the way, I don't mind this being in the video because it's also another important point. Um, I talked about, you know, when I was assaulted when I was eight, um, but it wasn't by a man and it wasn't by an older man. It was by um, a girl who was around my age. Mm -hmm. Right. And she knew because I'm also autistic. But also mm -hmm. at the time, I didn't know that. And right. looking back, I can totally see why I was influenced by a lot of the things that she was, you know, trying to get me to do. But mm -hmm. these people online went back and screenshot my post where I spoke about it. I spoke about it very bluntly. It's like, I don't want to be pitied. I don't want to be called a victim. But I'm right. saying this because I'm getting people telling me that I've clearly never been abused so I don't understand what it's like to be a victim and that I don't have a place to speak in all, in all of this. Right, 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 right. 
people were screenshotting it and putting it on their stories. But, but then, but then, Evan Rachel would obviously can't speak for all victims. I mean, that's it's just, it's just it's how it's ridiculous it is. How these people you can only speak for yourself ever, you know? Yeah. And all these people yeah. point themselves as spokespeople for the entire community of people, mm. you know. You and it's always it. the same. It's always the same dynamic as well. You never see the amount of respect for a male coming out at all. It's, it's a complete yeah. hypo hip hypocritical situation. Yeah. You can't yeah. claim to advocate for one thing, mm -hmm. but only for a certain type of person. No, it, you gotta just you gotta do it or not do it. It's up to you. Right. Just don't sit on the wall with it don't try and be a performative activist I, like but that's, Evan that's the is. thing is if it's the performative activism thing is like it's not the same I don't think as mm -hmm. having being an authentic person who just and you know everybody deals with it their own way as well exactly, you know yeah. it's like everybody has their own very individual experience with that kind of stuff everybody copes with it their own way and you know I don't think yeah. it's something that can even be perceived as a community per se like you know Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, you know, you don't have to let it define you, obviously. And that's the thing. I, yeah, I hate what you're saying, too, is like when people have flung at anybody who's come to defense of Manson whatsoever and said you're a rape apologist and you're sick and this and that. And the other. It's like uh, I have I would never be a rape apologist. And I can say that I, too, am, am somebody who has had experiences like with, with situations like that. And also even just being a model, you come into contact with like a lot of people are involved in the industry because it gives them access to young women that are attractive and naive. And so like, I've been in contact with a lot of like skeevy people, but that, that if anything, because, you know, I, I tried to tell Kristen about this, like in the last interview I did with her, because I knew people would say, well, maybe you just didn't, don't know what a predator looks like to, about to me, because I was saying that I know that Manson didn't seem that way to me, but you know, like people are already going to like, try to act like that my opinion doesn't matter because they they've already chosen the narrative that they want to stick with and you know it's like the chances of, of pulling them away from that are very very slim but I can say for sure I've experienced lots of predators being in the industry that I was in I know predator when I'm around it definitely and I can tell you he's not it 